Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the match between Levante and FC Barcelona. Barcelona is going to have to continue to grab three points for every game they do play within the league. Because right now, within this title race that we are currently having, it is very tight. Like yes, Barcelona is in fourth place. But keep in mind, we do have three points less than Sevilla, one point less than Atletico Madrid. But Barcelona do have two games less than Sevilla and Atletico Madrid. As a matter of fact, Barcelona is behind in terms of games played compared to all of the teams within La Liga. And I do believe that once Barcelona is in that position where we do have the equal amount of games played to the other clubs, we will be in a very great position. Right now, we just do have to focus. We have to work on our health mentally, physically, be ready for anything that does come in our way because yes, it is possible. Yes, Barcelona does have the capacity to finish in second place for this season. We just have to work hard. We have to be focused. But what we are going to be doing in this video is do this. We are going to be talking about the Kylian Pape Erling Haaland transfer rumor with FC Barcelona because there has been quite a few people that have given their opinion regarding these two players and whether which player does fit with Barcelona better. And then after that section within the video, then we are going to be discussing the match preview between Levante and FC Barcelona. Everything is going to be very well organized in the timeline down below. And so if you do not have time to listen to the Kylian Pape Erling Haaland transfer rumor, you can always just skip it straight to the point where it does begin the pre-match preview between Barcelona and Levante. Again, I have completely organized everything for you guys. So sit back, relax, enjoy this video. And if you do have any questions for anything regarding Barcelona in general, you can always ask those questions in the Discord group chat or just put them in the comment sections down below. The people who are a member within this Barza Media YouTube channel do get first priority in terms of having their questions answered. And so now let's go into the section of Kylian Mbappe and Erling Haaland because yesterday, Dani Alves did have an interview with Sport and he was asked about the current situation of these two players, Erling Haaland and Kylian Mbappe, and who he does prefer at this club. And this is what Dani Alves had to say, and I quote, Honestly, I would not spend such a sum of money for Erling Haaland. I would take it for Kylian Mbappe. If you are going to make a huge investment that you need to do in the best way possible, I would bet on Kylian Mbappe. And then the journalist asked, Okay, if Mbappe is not possible anyway, do you like Erling Haaland? And then he said, and I quote, I like good players always, but I think Kylian Mbappe is more suited to the method, but everyone does have their own taste. And so look, looking at Dani Alves' opinion on this whole thing was like breaking news to every Barcelona fan because he does favor someone like Kylian Mbappe over Erling Haaland. He believes that Mbappe does suit Barcelona better than Erling Haaland. And is that correct? Is what Dani Alves is saying 100% true? Now look, when it comes to these two players, if Barcelona want to go for either of these two, they're going to have to invest a massive amount of money. It's going to be a huge investment no matter what like yes we know that Kylian Mbappe is going to be a free agent in the summer but that doesn't mean anything because he is going to be having salary demands that is going to be reaching around 35 to 40 to maybe even 50 million euros per season because that is what Real Madrid are currently offering that is what PSG is currently offering and so if Barcelona do want to match that they're going to have to reach those type of numbers and so overall it is going to be a huge investment and then when it comes to Erling Haaland of course that is also going to be a very huge investment when it does come to the commissions the fees the salaries and everything else but if money Money was not an issue and Barcelona were able to afford either of these two players who would fit better, Kylian Mbappe or Erling Haaland. I would say, yes, Dani Alves is true. Kylian Mbappe would fit way better in Barcelona. Now, let me explain why I am saying this. Kylian Mbappe is the type of profile that Xavi would love to have because this is a player that does have the versatility to play in different positions, right? Have different solutions within your front three and he does have the technique. Like, of course, he has one of the best techniques in the world. And if next season, right, just remember this is all like what if we're just talking about this for the sake of conversation but if next season we could have a front three of Ansu Fati on the left Kylian Pape as the striker and Fedan Torres as the right winger that's going to be a front three that could work like of course Kylian Pape would fit in Barcelona Fedan Torres is someone that does know how to play on the right wing he has shown that with Barcelona Man City before he has shown that with also the Spanish national team and he has played world class in that position and also when it comes to this front three of Ansu Mbappe and Fedan Torres it's not going to be a fixed position it's not going to be like a Messi Neymar Suarez where they all have to be in their own position. Ansu can sometimes shift into the center. Kylian Mbappe takes on the left wing. Maybe Ferran Torres goes into the center. Kylian Mbappe goes on the right wing. They can all share different positions depending on the game. So it could really work. And that is something that I believe Xavi would love to see is to see that, oh yes, Kylian Mbappe can obviously work on the right wing because maybe one day maybe Ferran Torres or Dembele is injured. Then yes, we could put Mbappe on the right wing and then put a Bamiang as a striker. Or maybe if Ansu Fati is injured, we can also put Kylian Mbappe on the left wing 
take Ansu Fati out and put a different striker in that position. Maybe Ferran Torres and Dembele on the right wing. And so you see how it gives so many solutions, so many answers. And at the same time, Kylian Mbappe will still come out with the exact same goals and assists because he does have that within him. And then a couple of hours ago, Xavi Hernandez did have a few words to say about what Dani Alves did say yesterday. And this is what Xavi said, and I quote, I forgive Dani Alves for everything, whatever he says. Sometimes you complain that there are no headlines. Well, with Dani, it's hard to choose one. It's a phenomenon. And then he said, we are in the economic situation we are in. The club knows my priorities. And from here, we will see what we can do. And so look, in my opinion, even though what Dani Alves did say was like, great, of course, it was factual. Like, I know that this may not even ever happen. Like, even though, yes, it was true, Alves should have never said this in the first place because we know that Xavi Hernandez does prioritize the move of Erling Haaland. And do you really think Erling Haaland would like to hear that there are some players within this club that are saying, yes, I will choose Kylian Pape because he fits better at Barcelona and the methods that Barcelona are portraying on the field. It wouldn't make no sense because now you're pushing away the signing, maybe, of Erling Haaland. And even when it comes to the price tag, right, John Laporta has always said, I'm not going to be speaking about players because that is only going to raise their prices in the market, which is, again, very true because if we give these players the audacity, right, the fire and say, oh, look, I know what you guys think about me. I know that you guys think that I'm a special player. If you guys do want me, I'm going to be asking for this amount. And yes, you can't say no because you have already said that I would work in Barcelona, that I am a star player. And so that is what John Laporta does mean. And that is why he doesn't want himself or other players to speak about other players because it is going to be raising the price tag. The agents are going to be listening and they're going to be saying, yes, we have the leverage because you, right, this club do think that my player is great. You cannot say no, just accept this offer. And it's going to make Barcelona's negotiations way harder in the future, regardless of who they go for, whether it's Lewandowski, Kylian Mbappe, Erling Haaland, Darwin Nunez, and many other more. But going back to reality and where everything really does stand, right? Let's get away from fantasy land. Kylian Mbappe is very close to joining Real Madrid. There are many reports stating that he might actually stay at PSG because of what PSG are offering him and the supporting project. And then when it comes to Erling Haaland, he still has to make a decision. Right now, Barcelona do have the lowest offer to give for this player. They're nowhere near Man City or Real Madrid or any other club when it comes to the salary lended towards Erling Haaland. And so right now we're just in a position where we do not know if we're going to get Erling Haaland. And it is like 99% ruled off that we will have someone like Kylian Mbappe wear the Barcelona shirt in the next season. But again, it's very, very interesting. But now let's go into the pre-match preview between Levante and FC Barcelona. Now look, just to make things very clear, when it does come to this team, we are going to be facing one of the worst teams in the league. We are going to be facing a team that is in the bottom three when it comes to chances created. They are considered to be in last place when it comes to goals conceded per 90 minutes. They do concede a total of 1.9 goals per 90, which is the worst in La Liga. So offensively and defensively, they are one of the worst. And Barcelona do need to make this seem like it is an easy game. They need to score at least, at the very least, five to six goals within this 90 minute window. And we need this, right? Mentally, physically, we need this type of motivation, this type of focus on the pitch, because what did happen in the previous game against Frankfurt, it was a very flat performance, and we need that uplifting match in order for us to regain our momentum and do very well moving forward and complete this season on a very strong note. And there is no room for us to rest any of our A players. We need to have our great and our best starting 11 face against Levante, score five to six goals, and really gain our confidence back. Now, if we look at the squad list here, we can see that Memphis is going to be out. It is ruled off. He will not be there. Ansu Fati is also going to be out. Xavi Hernandez did say in the pre-match press conference that he needs about three to four more training sessions in order for him to be extremely ready and finally go into the pitch again and play a game. Ansu Fati has been training with the group as of late, but right now they are deciding that he is not ready yet. When it comes to Gerard Piquet, we have talked about this yesterday. He is encountering a left abductor injury, so he is going to be out for sure against Levante, and we do not know whether he's going to be available for the game against Frankfurt. And then when it comes to Serginho Dest, Serginho Dest continues to be injured. It has been said, and many reports have suggested, that Dest might be out for at least another 10 days, which is very unfortunate. But overall, when it comes to this squad list, we do have the players to get a great result. Barcelona need to act fast. When it comes to the movement on the ball, movement off the ball, it has to be 100%. We want to see Pedri and Gavi be more on the ball compared to what we did see against Frankfurt. We do need to see solutions for these two players to see more on the ball because I do not want to see the same thing happen like what we did see against Frankfurt where we did see about five, six players defend Gavi and Pedri and not give the defenders, right, Eric Garcia and Arajo, the outlet to pass it to a midfielder in the midfield. And then we also do want to see more participation from Aubameyang and Luke de Jong and Fernand Torres becoming that lethal attacker that we do want to see. Yes, he is scoring goals, but he can score way, way more. And so the world is waiting to see what this player could 
actually become and hopefully tomorrow can be a brand new beginning so this is going to be my suggested starting 11 that we could see face up against Levante and I do expect to see Ter Stegen in goal our defensive line being Jordi Alba Ero Garcia and Rodajo and Dani Alves and then our midfield being Busquets Pedri and Frankie. I do believe that this is a midfield that is considered as our best A game midfield it is Frankie, it is Pedri it is Busquets Frankie has finally found his best form Pedri is being Pedri we know the type of player he is he is becoming a phenomenal player and is gaining respect from around the world and Busquets is going to continue to be Busquets we know what he can portray as a central defensive midfielder and there is no signs of him slowing down as for our front three I do expect to see Dembele on the right Aubameyang as the striker and Fidan Torres as the left winger with a front three like this with a starting 11 like this overall we should expect to see great results we need the three points we need to score a four five six goal game and so let's make it happen if you guys do have any score predictions for tomorrow's night's match put it down in the comment section down below let's get ready i am going to be going live one hour before the match even starts and we are going to be talking about the starting 11 and then move on from there but now i will be ending it here thank you guys so much for watching if you guys are new here welcome to the channel please like subscribe comment and i will see you guys in the next video